Hey guys, Jared with Trident Fly Fishing, and today we're going to be tying a wicked cool surface fly. We're going to tie the surface seducer, double barrel popper. Super durable, super cool pattern, and we're going to get started on it right now. So in the vise, I have a Gabakatsu B10S in a size 2. Um, you can definitely use the surface seducer popper hooks for this. Um, I find as long as I get enough thread on here and enough super glue, these things do not rotate on the hook. Um, so I'm just going to cover my hook shank with some thread here, and I'm using GSP 100 in black. Um, first thing you want to do is bore a hole through these things, so grab a lighter, grab your bodkin, stick it through the back, and make sure it's nice, straight, and level, and just create a hole in this thing. One thing I like to do is create some bumps in this, so I'm not getting a nice flat thread base. I'm literally trying to create some space here so that when I jam my popper over this and fill this thing with super glue, there's places for the glue to go. So I'm just going to use some super glue and I have brush on super glue. And you're going to need a good amount on there, so lather that thing up. Guys, we will be giving this fly away at the end of the video. Um, make sure you comment below. Um, tell us what you think of the fly, what we should tie next, what your favorite sandwich meat is, something. And we'll pick somebody from the comments to win this thing. So I'm going to jam it on there. Ugh, and there it goes. And then I'm going to do a quick 360. Kind of squeeze it so it holds. Make sure it's level, square, so that it rides really well in the water. Um, that's pretty much it. Just wait for it to dry. Okie doke. So, I'm tying this in white. It's not going to be white. I'm going to color it up with some Copic markers. And the color scheme I'm going to go for is Fire Tiger. So basically I'm going to take orange, um, using the chisel side, get it on there, on the bottom. Good enough. And then I'm going to take yellow. And if you have the colorless blender, it's probably better for your markers. Um, I'm just going to kind of drag color around with my markers here, and you'll see what I'm doing. Next color is going to be uh, chartreuse lime green. I'm going to do the same thing. You know, pull some color up from the yellow there. I'm going to switch back to yellow and kind of blend this a little bit. You can color these up however you like. This is probably one of my favorite color combos. It's just wicked cool to draw on here. Um, next is black. I'm going to use a fine point for this. I'm going to come in here, um, rotate it so you can see, and basically I'm going to create a line and then I'm going to come in here and just kind of do some random squiggles towards the back and down. It helps if you're jacked up a little bit on coffee. Um, really randomize this and just kind of get some stuff on there. Uh, does not matter how it looks, really. You want it to be random and just bring it down a bit. Very cool. Good enough. Alrighty, so I'm going to grab red again. And mm, I'm going to rotate this thing so you can see So what I'm doing. I'm just going to create a lip all around this rim here that is red. Then I'm going to jam my marker in here and color that whole thing up. And make sure I get it all come in here and just uh, I like to kind of create a little triangle of red there and bring it in and then what I do is I go back and grab my orange again and kind of blend that in you can have some fun with this if you have the airbrush system or I've seen guys you can use um, compressed air from like a little can and shoot color onto this thing I would definitely recommend getting 
the Copic airbrush system if you're going to go that route. You can grab all the stencils and cool stuff and really make some cool poppers out of this. So I'm just going to start my thread again right behind the body, get a little base, and then I like to kind of think of these as a frog, sort of. So I'm going to grab some flash. Basically you can jam whatever you can behind this. I have a giant tangled mess of black flashaboo that was jammed in the bottom of a drawer so it's all tangled but I'm just gonna cut it kind of taper my ends and then grab a chunk and fold it back over my thread and tie it in the middle here and then bring it back um, that's pretty long I can come in here and take my scissors and just kind of taper this out a little bit and that looks good enough to me uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is grab some barred or in or yellow hackle here I'm gonna grab two that match um, take a measurement somewhere around there and then just strip off stuff prepare your feathers and I'm gonna tie them back to back so that they splay out so when they're in the water, they kind of give the profile of frog legs, and then when you strip them, it kicks. Okay. All right, so when you have your uh, two feathers prepared, you can tie them in one of two ways. You can grab them, stick them up here, and kind of pinch them on, or you can do what I'm going to do and just place one at a time on either side. So make sure this is flat, and you might have to manipulate the feather a bit and flat is going to be relative today and that one rotated on me that's cool it's fine we can kind of manipulate the feather with our thread and our fingers while it's up there um, get rid of this just get that out of your way and that looks good enough to me so the next thing I'm going to tie in is going to be some rubber legs. So for rubber legs, I have medium round rubber legs in black. Um, and I grabbed one long, very strip, long strip of two. And I'm going to tie them in. I'm not going to cut them. Tie them in. Two doubled up strands on my side. And then I'm going to fold this thing over. And they're wicked long, so uh, rotate those around. And I can pull them where I need them. Um, I'm probably going to come in here and trim some of that out right about there. Cool. Um, the next thing I'm going to tie in is going to be some fluorescent yellow marabou blood quills I'm just gonna grab a pretty puffy one and I'm gonna prep this by kind of stripping some of the fluffier junk from the bottom um, it's a little matted up pulling out the tip find the tip and then cut the very tip off wet it a little bit tie that in okie doke so I'm just going to take a couple wraps of this. Um, this is pretty much just a filler material um, to help me transition from my tail to my body. I'm only going to take a couple wraps. Might use the whole thing. We'll see how it looks. Yeah. You can see I'm as I wrap this, I'm manipulating material around. And just pulling it back. That looks good there. So, come in here, kind of pull this up, and then just throw a quick wrap in there. Hmm. Okie doke, I got two wraps on it. It should hold while well, I trim that out. I'm just going to cover that up and make sure it's really bound down. Okay, okay. 
So basically what I've done is I have rubber legs up here and I have rubber legs in the tail. So I get some movement. It's going to stick out laterally and out the back too. So the next material is going to be some orange hackle. For this, if I had schloppen, I would use it, but I'm just going to pick through this and find a very relatively webby hackle out of this pack. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to strip out some of the fluffy stuff, but I'll keep some in too. Okay, I'm just going to tie my hackle in right at this little clear spot that I have. And I'm going to tie it in so that when I wrap it, the fibers fold back. So I'm just going to manipulate the fibers back with my fingers. You'll see when I transition from this fluffy stuff to stiffer hack a little, start to stand up a little bit. It gives it a cool effect. All right, that's probably good. I'm going to get this up here and then tie it off. Um, I'm going to jam one more hackle in here of a different color. So I'm just going to wiggle my thread through so I don't trap anything. Come in here. Get that out of there. Pull this back and throw another wrap. So the next hackle I'm going to use is going to be chartreuse. And I'm going to pick... So I'm going to pick a large-ish hackle with similar texture to the other hackle. Leave some of the webbier stuff in, but not as much as I did for the first one. And this is going to create some more bulk and help me transition to my body. Um, these legs are bugging me, so I'm just going to cut them and see if they'll stay out of my way a little better. So I'm going to do the same thing here, um, tie this in the same way. And work through this. The nice thing about GSP is no matter how much I hit, hit my hook point, it's probably not going to break. So pull these forwards. I'm going to make sure that my thread is pulled all the way up to this transition point between the body and the back so that I can tie this off really close. So I'm going to really try and stack some of these wraps in here. Okie doke. I'm going to take a wrap in front of my rubber legs too. Let's see if I can get this out of the way. I should have trimmed that out. Okie doke. So, I'm just going to sneak a wrap in here. Hold that down. Uh, kind of get my rubber legs in pretty much their final position. Wrap in front, wrap behind. Tie that down. And then I'm going to whip finish in here. GSP is pretty strong, so I should be good with just those three. Come in here and just push cut that off. Very cool. I'm going to sneak some uh, super glue down in here. you got to be very careful with super glue in your tail that you don't get heavy handed and just get it all through your materials because it'll wreck the effect you created. So I'm going to be very, very careful here. And it should penetrate down. So I'm going to really just dab it in there. Okie doke. So the next thing I'm going to do is grab my eyes. And for eyes, I have fish, fish skull living eyes. And they are in size 4, which matches the hole in the popper here. Uh, the cool thing about these poppers is on in the package they tell you what size eyes they use and what size hook to use and it's really accurate which is nice 
So I'm just going to dab some super glue in there. Um, grab my bodkin so I can push. I'm just going to get it in there and then hold it. That's pretty good. Rotate that thing around. Do the same thing. Get some super glue in there. Um, I'm using a cool Kelly Gallup trick. He sticks his eyes on his hand here, so they're right there when you need them. Better than trying to get them off my desk. Okay, so. Alrighty, those should be on there. Um, I'm going to come in here and just break my legs apart. And... Get them to splay out a bit. I really like this pattern just because you can do so much with it. Like I'm tying this in Fire Tiger with a bunch of rubber legs, but you could do almost whatever you wanted. I think they look really good, Re very simple too. Um, I do like them in all white with just a hackle tail and a little bit of hackle up front here. I think it gives a nice clean look. Okay, I think I got them all. Alrighty, so the last thing I'm going to do for durability here is you could fish this thing just like this, but I'm going to coat this whole thing in Loon UV epoxy with a brush, and it's a messy process, but basically all I'm going to do is lather it on there, use the brush to spread it around, and once I get a good coat, it should self-level. But this is going to make sure that your marker doesn't bleed and that this thing is super, super durable. Um, again, I'm going to try not to get anything in my tail. And your eyes will not go anywhere after this. All right, that looks pretty good. And I'm going to jam some some more. I'm going to rotate this whole vise around so you can see what I'm doing relatively. Um, I'm just going to jam it in there, more or less. There's really no science to this, just kind of covering everything up. And that's probably good. I'm going to bring this back. Okie doke. And you can see it's relatively level. I got it pretty much covered. Um, you may have to go and do this in two coats. Um, I'm using thick. Okie doke. So this has leveled itself out. Um, I used thick. You could definitely use flow or thin. Um, I like the thick. I think it gives me a little bit more control. Um, basically, I just want to make sure that this thing's fully cured and just go around 360. Um, you could skip that step too, but I like to add it. I think it's a nice touch. It gives it a little bit of shine. But that's pretty much it, guys. Um, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell notification so you're notified of all of our future fly tying videos. Make sure you do comment. Um, I was serious about the lunch meat. Very curious. And we'll see you next time.